Welcome to We Day Han Suop, Great Minds. I am David Shambaugh, and I'm Professor of Asian Studies, Political Science, and International Affairs, and Director of the China Policy Program at George Washington University in Washington, D.C. In this episode, we are going to examine uh, the first leader of the People's Republic of China, Mao Zedong. Mao Zedong led the Chinese Communist Party to power um, from 1934, when he became the undisputed leader of the party, through to 1949, he left China for the first time in his life. He traveled by train all the way across Siberia in February, the dead of winter, to Moscow. Stalin, the Soviet leader at the time, did not treat Mao well at all. Um, in fact, Stalin only so saw him in the, on the second night in Moscow. They had a formal banquet, and then he didn't, didn't see him again for another five weeks. But after six weeks, they were able to conclude a mutual security treaty and alliance, a very large economic assistance program and technology transfer program, and political support from the Soviet Union to China. So it has to be recognized that from the very beginning, the Soviet Union was China's only benefactor. So the first decade of Mao's rule, he fully embraced the Soviet Union. And the Soviet Union embraced him. However, in 1953, Stalin died. Stalin was replaced by Khrushchev. Khrushchev and Mao never got along. And the relationship began to progressively unravel really from the mid-50s all the way through to 1960 when it finally ruptured altogether. This is known as the Sino-Soviet split. And from then until 19, the mid-1980s, the two countries become major military adversaries with each other. Um, so China's national security environment has to be said through the entire Maoist era was a very endangered one, especially after the Sino-Soviet split. They had no ally, they had no supporters. They had hostile Soviet Union to the north. They had countries like India and Vietnam to the south with whom they fought border wars. So they're very insecure internally in China. Mao then began what I described to you a moment ago about his transformative mission to change Chinese society. He did this through a series of unrelenting campaigns. Yundong is the phrase in Chinese. It started in 1950 and they ran all the way through his lifetime. different types of campaigns, like the Great Leap Forward, which resulted in the death of about 40 million people. That was an attempt to industrialize the countryside, the interior of country. Crazy idea. It resulted in widespread famine, and as I say, about 40 million deaths. Great Leap Forward famine, 1962, in fact. Mao came under criticism from other leaders he said, who said, you're responsible, 40 million of our countrymen have died because of your crazy policies. And he handed over power, day-to-day -day power, to a series of leaders led by Liu Xiaoqi, the president, Deng Xiaoping, another senior leader, Chen Yun, a senior economist, Long story short, within three years, by 1966, they had restabilized the Chinese economy and it was actually growing uh, quite well. But they had used methods, incentive methods, capitalist methods, um, that Mao uh, thought to be, quote, revisionist. So he comes back to power in 1966 and he accuses them of practicing revisionism. And that, launches the Cultural Revolution, which is an attack on these individuals, 
and their policies. It goes on for 10 years, one of the most horrific events, not just in Chinese, but also in world history. Hundreds of, of thousands were executed, several million died. Um, so Mao wanted to build a very different kind of society for China, a communist society. He saw socialism uh, as a mere midstep on the transition to pure communism.